Advocate Sunil, thank you for the, the interview, it's much appreciated. Uh, no worries. Regarding your latest press release, um, could you tell us about the press release? Why do you publish it? What, 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 why release it? Well, I think it's important that not too much goes on over here that's in, um, in secrecy, as it were. Um, and this morning was the final act in what I can only term a, a surreal experience um, at a number of levels. There is to say that a, a prosecution was brought against you by the uh, Attorney General and it's now been, the prosecution has been dropped? They, yeah, it was um, withdrawn this morning um, on the basis of insufficient evidence. Well, they had insufficient evidence to start. Um, and they've agreed to pay my costs this morning. But it was, I mean, this was the final act was, was truly surreal because it was in front of um, uh, Commissioner Clyde Smith, um, who of course is um, a friend of the complainants, as it were. So his family are very friendly with the complainant. And I was down in the magistrate's court being indicted and there was um, Commissioner Clyde Smith's son sitting there taking notes. Um, and he seemed rather reluctant to engage uh, in conversation with me about what he was doing there. What's the significance of uh, Commissioner Clyde Smith's son taking notes at a magistrate's court hearing? It's, it's surreal for a sitting judge to have family members taking notes in relation to one particular case. And of course Clyde Smith has a rather, rather long history with, um, with myself. Um, I don't know who, who remembers the um, Cantrade scandal. The Bank of Cantrade. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is when um, Commissioner Clyde Smith tried to get me um, prosecuted for uh, misfeasance as a lawyer for having had the temerity to give evidence in an American court. Um, and that evidence was the effect that um, my clients as complainants were uh, effectively being frozen out by the authorities and by portions of the judiciary. Um, this was the famous incident where Sir Philip Balash, who was then the sitting judge, referred to my um, defrauded investors as being people who should be taken to the harbour. No. Yes. So that's... Um, I'd like to just get on to your press release here because uh, you, say, you say in the press release that this prosecution against you can easily be interpreted as a deliberate act of intimidation designed to deter yourself and others from speaking out, uh, from speaking about the need for judicial reform and accountability. Yes. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, isn't it surprising how many people in our society become accident prone um, as soon as they discard, as soon as they start to say that um, we need accountability or reform, um, or they're just in the wrong place at the wrong time? I mean, we're on our. How many senior policemen have we now lost? Well, we've had. Uh, we, <laughs> Ever since Graham Power, we had the Gradwell and Walk Up sketch, didn't we? Then we got the uh, no, but in, but in terms of ones who, ones who, I mean, Gradwell and Walk Up were um, rather sort of um, creatures of the establishment, as it were. But I mean, in terms of straight coppers that we've lost, um, Mr. Harper managed to escape before they managed to prosecute him. But then there was the question of trying to get him arrested for something. I can't remember exactly what. Uh, Mr. Power, um, and then um, we've had two more. And that's within you know, a very short period of time. So when you say accident prone, that you've, um, you're suggesting that, that they're saying you've obviously become accident prone. Uh, how do you oh, mean yeah. by this? What do you mean by this? Well, isn't it odd that um, anybody who speaks out over here and says, well, hold on a minute, we ought to have a debate about where we're going and you know, how things are run, um, suddenly starts to pick up um, you know, either criminal attention or regulatory attention of some sort. Um, and, and I think you've already given a list of uh, any number, um, six or seven on your blog. Um, and I think that's probably scratching the surface because there'll be less high profile people within the civil service, within the police and so on and so forth. Um, and no, nobody, no thinking person is going to very easily go and do the same thing because they know what's going to happen. I mean, you don't have to get a conviction of Mr. Sinelli, you just cost him money, aggravate him, you know, and put him through some stress, and people get the message. So you think that this, there are possibly malicious prosecutions uh, and intimidation you're, you're suffering because you've spoken out, amongst other things, of the, of the child abuse scandal? 
that, that that's one of it. That, that, that's one of the many things that, not many things, but you know, I have by accident rather than, uh, than by design um, ended up in a position where I've said frequently that um, we need reform. Um, and the child um, abuse um, scandal is but one symptom, as it were. Um, and I will be giving evidence next month. I was going to ask that. You are giving evidence to the child abuse yeah. scandal. Yeah, my first interviews in the next week or so. Um, and there are a lot of very worrying factors, not only in relation to what happened in the first place, but how it was dealt with over the years um, subsequently. Well, again, we, we are coming down to it. So it. Everything seems to come back to the Jer Jersey judiciary, the Jersey judicial function. Uh, I've just published your submission yeah, to yeah. Carswell, which was, yeah. which, which was a, a, a damning read, really, on, on our institution, isn't it? Yeah, no, no, that, yeah no, and then, you know, very shortly thereafter, Mr. Burke was having a poke at me, um, and so it goes on from there. It is a damning read. Um, and what's, I think, what's, what's most worrying is that that was published 2009, 10? Published 2010, I believe you wrote yeah, it in 2009. 2000, 2010, and then yeah. Carl, Mr. Carswell and his, um, his committee came out very firmly in favour of um, separation of powers, and that's the root cause that we have uh, a lot of problems over here. Um, and we still have the same position as we did then. Because and, and we just have this sort of continuous, you know, the oligarchy, and that's not too strong a word, I think, over here, continually embarrassing themselves, um, behaving in a way that lo lo loses public respect and confidence. Uh, and the answer to that, of course, is to shut up the complainants and to, to lean on anybody who says that this isn't quite right. But is that method really doing the establishment any favours? Isn't this? I mean, when does it? When will it become so embarrassing that Whitehall have to step in uh, and, and restore the, the good governance and the rule of law? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, Whitehall always say that there are a lot of barriers and they're not going to, or they don't, or whatever. But that's not true. They do when they want to. Um, I've seen, you know. How many times have I seen this sort of thing? I've seen them intervene in criminal prosecutions. Um, no thinking person is going to think that Sir Philip Banner simply resigned after the Liberation Day speech on the basis that he was ill. I'm no great political commentator, as it were. I, I think I've got enough to, to, to do with, with what I do, and my fundamental objection is that um, the judicial function needs to be separated from the political and the prosecutory. Um, it shouldn't all be the same, same people. Well, that's common sense. It's um, hygiene, really. Well, obviously now you're, you're you're very outspoken, and that's why you believe, and many others believe, that you you've been subject to such an intimidation mm -hmm. and possibly m malicious prosecutions. But you, uh, what about the rest of your fellow lawyers, solicitors, and is it? I mean, do they think that we've got an adequate judiciary um, that, that's fair, impartial, objective, and competent? No. Where are they? This is the, now, my argument is everything that allowed Hope de la Garen, Jimmy Savile, yeah. anything to, to go on, was about people keeping their mouth shut yes. and saying nothing. You've always been outspoken. Um, and it looks well, sort of accidentally, really. <laughs> I mean, it just sort of happened. It wasn't, um, I mean, it wasn't a career path that I actually chose. It's just uh, because uh, yeah, people ask me a lot of questions about a lot of things. That, uh, uh, fundamentally, I'm a I run civil claims for people, uh, and that's 95% of what I do. I've done some pro bono work for various people over the years and, and you know, trying to help the care leavers um, for a bit as well. But um, fundamentally, I'm simply doing money claims for people um, in what I would term the usual way. And this sort of stuff has come along uh, sort of incidental to it. I'm very a sort of reluctant revolutionary, if I can put it that way. <laughs> but yeah. there are soundings in your profession that there's, I don't know what, what the, the correct term to use here, that then not everybody in your profession is happy with the way the judiciary is run right now. My question is, who are these people in your profession? Where are they? Why aren't they speaking out? Why aren't they putting an end to it? Well, I don't think they want to join me in the dock. So I mean, that, I mean that's, I mean, you know, you've got this... Um, you know, the Attorney General will pop up something and, you know, th th there'll, there'll be something else. I mean, this is, uh, you know, I've had a lot of, lot of this over the years. 
um, and the others get the message. Um, privately, they might say some pretty robust things about um, any number of aspects over here. But they know from my track record what's going to happen if they start poking their heads above the, the, the parapet. So they're just keeping their head down. So it's, it's fair to, is it fair to say that in the uh, judicial, the, 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 in certain law departments and lawyers, they're, uh, they're not best pleased with, with the way our, judici our judicial function is working this series? I mean, they, they, say, say, um, they say rather racier things than I do. But not publicly. Yeah. Hopefully, we can get start getting because people do need to start talking, speaking out. Is is what we're after. Um, and you said that, that also, I just want to go back to your press release here because you said there's been uh, numerous attacks on your reputation and livelihood, uh, all by the expense of the taxpayer. Your your estimate cost to the taxpayer is is, is a million pounds. Well, that's say? a re reasonable one. I mean, I've had. Um, costs orders, that, that's when I reclaim a portion of my cost, they must be north of 300,000. Um, one, two, well, that's just the last three I can think of. Um, plus then there's the cost of the taxpayer behind, you know, on, on the other side, plus plus. Um, so the real cost depends on how you, how you do it, but it's certainly in the hundreds of thousands. And then going back, I can't remember when can trade was now, and there were questions at the time. Uh, how much did it cost to um, you know, bring a prosecution against Mr. Sinell for um, giving evidence in a foreign court? And I mean, that was just that was round, roundly re rejected. Um, uh, we had an English judge over, gave me full indemnity costs. Um, uh, and, so they, and so they go on. I mean, it just keep, keeps coming. Uh, they haven't seemed to have an inexhaustible supply of taxpayers' money and, and, and disingenuity to go with it. Now, you can always. You could always make something up. I mean, I think the, um, you know, I can think of, I mean, particularly Graham Power and, you know, and, and some of some of the others. I mean, it's just just make it up, you make up something, or you move the the, the factual, you know, the facts and the the, the thresholds round a bit, and, and then the poor soul has to go through, or you know, a process to get rid of it. And some, you know, some some people's health collapse, and um, it's, it's a major trauma.